you are more than welcome to turn off your video and turn off your mic. Otherwise, you can join us on YouTube later when we post the video. Hopefully, you'll stay. Uh, we will get started in a few minutes. Uh, can I get a volunteer to do the prayers to Umze today? A refuge student? Karen? All right. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's fine. So we're ready. The uh, chant leader. I am. What's seven lines are. Okay. Do you want, are you saying, Lama, you're going to sing this? I can sing it. Yeah, go sing it. Yeah, sing it. Okay. <clears throat> Um, organ yogi no jang sham pema ge sa dang po la ya shin chogi no drug ne pema june jesu drag Kordu kadro mang pu kor ke ki jesu dog tru ki jinji lop shir shek su so guru pema sidi hong Morgan Yogi no Jang Sham Pema Gay Sardang Pola Yashin Shogi no Trugne Pema June Jay 
Jesu drag, kordu kadro man pu kor, ke ki Jesu drag drupi, jin ji lop shu shak su so, guru pema siddhi Ung organ yogi no jong sham Hama gaysar dong pola Yashin shogi no jugne Hama june jesu dra Kordu kadro mang pu kor Ke ki jesu dag drupi Jin ji lop shir shek su so Guru pema siddhi Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, Helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, Supreme One, Teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, Foe Destroyer, Glorious Victorious One, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you, Chief of Humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth, and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who were wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom, like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust, matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, field of ocean-like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone, I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the Dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, while abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma Refuge, homage to the Great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage. To all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action. Accumulate virtue and goodness. Subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning, and clouds, look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in a guru. 
I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create, by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen. May I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O oh, my masters, my yadams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these out of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. Iram Guru Radna Mandala Kam Niyatyami. The Heart of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time, the Bhagavan was dwelling on Massive Vultures Mountain on Rajagriha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then, through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, How should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, said this to the Venerable Shariputra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly, beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. For form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element, and so on, and up to, and including, no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to, and including, no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration, 
and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared, tayata, gate, gate, par gate, par sam gate, bodhisattva. Tayata, gate, gate, par gate, par sam gate, bodhisattva. Saraputra, the bodhisattva, mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the bodhisattva, mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of lineage. It is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated, even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan, having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharavadi Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Arya Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. Huh? Yeah. Okay, good. So, um, good morning. Uh, just for fun, I'll show you my uh, uh, llama color mask. Like that. <laughs> How does it look? <laughs> I'll take it off, but I'm hoping everyone's staying safe. Okay. <clears throat> So for um, close students, uh, many who are on the um, video now, you know, so I do like to meet with people. So that requires you being safe too, right? If you need to get tested, you get tested. If you need to stay away, stay away. But, uh, you know, I do, I'm still meeting with people at Middleway Health and we're being appropriate distancing and masking up if we need to. So that means to see me, you also got to see yourself as a healthy Bodhisattva Buddha, right? So to stay healthy. So I hope everyone is um, scientific to that degree, okay? <laughs> we do medicine Buddha and we do meditation and prayers, but um, so you still have to be scientific because it's cause and effect in biology. So uh, realization, Buddhahood, emptiness does not eliminate our uh, cause and effect of regular biological reality. Otherwise, the Buddha wouldn't have, uh, you know, disintegrated, right? There would be no stupas with the Buddha's ashes in them. So uh, the Buddha did us a big favor by, um, you know, dying in that way, just very naturally. Uh, other beings, of course, uh, they uh, dissolved into light like Gurimshe. So um, even then, uh, you want to have a regular body so people can learn from you. Uh, so if you, you know, attain rainbow body, uh, 
upon your death, uh, that's good for you. But usually even people attaining rainbow body, uh, Jalu, they're going to uh, have some kind of something left, right? They sometimes uh, shrink to a very small size or they sometimes leave ring cell, you know, um, their uh, jewel drops or something like that. So, but uh, we always want uh, us to be healthy as possible. <clears throat> and that means uh, possible in this crazy uh, samsaric world to get good medical care and take care of oneself. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, can people see the, um, the uh, lights, the tea lights going? Hope so. You think they can? Yeah, so Hannah's going to uh, adjust a little bit. Let me see what I look like so I can tell from my side. Uh, okay, yeah, so that's great. So um, today is not the official day of Lama Sankhapa's um, Parnirvana. Uh, the tenth was, but um, we're going to um, acknowledge it and celebrate it in our own way. Um, it, it's normal to do uh, Lama Sankhapa Guru Yoga, and I want to do some Mixama at the end, but um, today I wanted to stress the fact that um, uh, Lama Sankhapa is uh, generally identified with uh, the Buddha aspect uh, of Manjushri. Um, Manjushri is sometimes uh, called Bodhisattva, sometimes Buddha, but in any case, uh, always identified with uh, wisdom. Uh, and the Bodhisattva uh, Manjushri, the Buddha Manjushri generally is depicted in a kind of a nice a warm orangey red holding a, a flaming sword um, and looking uh, just really delighted. So <clears throat> uh, I want to do some practice uh, uh, called the Praise to Manjushri. And um, I printed out a text that I think um, maybe, uh, maybe Dirk has, I don't know, like I was told. We'll see. So, um, and I think I found a typo, so I'm just delighted. <laughs> so, uh, in Dharma, we we have to attain uh, the wisdom mind. We might call it uh, primordial awareness, or wisdom, or um, you know, other words, you know, uh, transcendent knowledge, but we have to see the truth. We have to see the things, uh, the way things are. So the way things are is sometimes broken down into like three aspects. There's uh, uh, so-called outer phenomena or just phenomena, uh, which can include uh, thoughts and uh, trees and cats and dogs, or, and then there's uh, the, self, our identity, and then there's uh, the nature of awareness itself, nature of mind. So uh, in the higher teachings, it's absolutely essential that uh, we realize the nature of mind. Uh, and we say mind, uh, it's not always a great translation to use the English word mind, because then we just start thinking. So here, we're, we have to start using words like uh, the nature of awareness itself, the nature of aliveness. Uh, sometimes they say the uh, lived experience. <clears throat> but when these all come together, we understand uh, phenomena, we understand who we are, and we understand nature mind, uh, then we've uh, become Buddha, we've become Manjushri. So I want to emphasize with Lama Sankhaba Day, uh, it isn't um, celebrating um, just some teacher that um, you know died in early 15th century in Tibet, um, but we have to look at you know what uh, does Lama Sankhapa uh, represent? What's Lama Sankhapa's essence? 
all the Buddhas have the same essence. So uh, this is important because people get very um, sectarian, kind of like uh, soccer teams sometimes in Buddhism. Uh, but uh, Shakyamuni Buddha and Padmasambhava and Yishi Sogyal, uh, Atisha Tsongkhapa, uh, Yujim Rinpoche, Dalai Lama uh, Dilgo Kensei Rinpoche, all Buddhas, so the same, right? Actually, completely same, like that. So that's very important. Otherwise, uh, becomes a big problem for us. We're we're thinking, oh well, this this person has uh, higher realization. That person has higher realization. So of course they have different styles of teaching and different emphasis on different things. But uh, I wanted to emphasize that uh, when we're talking about Lama Sankhapa Day or Lama Sankhapa. Um, we're not um, excluding uh, all the other Buddhas, right? So if we did uh, Lama Sankhapa Guru Yoga, uh, all our teachers, all the other uh, awakened beings are contained there. And when uh, we do Padmasambhava, then Lama Sankhapa is there uh, like that. <clears throat> it was... Um, hard for me as a typical Western educated uh, know-it-all person to uh, get into guru yoga um, because uh, one of the reasons that uh, you know perhaps we've all had trouble with is that we, we never met anybody really awake or enlightened so uh, it feels like kind of some um, Walt Disney kind of thing of imagining. Um, the Guru Yoga then, you know, just becomes uh, a wish-fulfilling fantasy, uh, an idealization. It's not meant to be that. It's meant to bring us back to the here and now, uh, to the present, and to see uh, our teacher and to see our uh, friends and ultimately our enemies even to see uh, their essential Buddha nature. So if we're doing Guru Yoga and we, we're just kind of saying, oh, my my lineage holder teacher is the best or uh, my Lama is the best or I'm the best, then uh, we're missing it. We're uh, here to promote uh, uh, seeing uh, the Buddha nature uh, qualities, uh, most importantly uh, in ourselves, but using our teacher, using the teachings, uh, using our Sangha members as mirrors to do that. <clears throat> so the, the practice in Vajrayana Buddhism of doing Guru Yoga um, doesn't work at all if uh, we just see our teacher as an ordinary person or we uh, see our Sangha members as kind of um, struggling idiots. Uh, if we uh, don't have, uh, believe that they're male and female Buddhas or, uh, you know, enlightened animals or beings, you know. So if we're thinking uh, very dualistically, um, I'm great and they're not, or the opposite, they're great and I'm an idiot, then we're not doing Guru Yoga. We're not generating uh, enlightened awareness and uh, fundamentally, we're not doing uh, Guru Yoga. Um, there probably needs to be a name for like maybe uh, maybe Guru Devotion or something like that. Um, and maybe that's where we have to start with developing a receptive heart and developing kind views towards others and uh, seeing others, you know, as kind of like, well, you, you look like just a a screwed up person to me, but you know, I'm at least grant that you may have a nature. <laughs> Maybe we need to start there, particularly uh, uh, in this country. So uh, let, let me stop there and, uh, you know, see if uh, I'm making sense, you know? So when, when people are silent, I'm assuming that I'm making some sense. So if someone has a doubt or an objection, then, uh, or need for clarification, uh, you should bring it up now.
I guess you have to unmute yourself or wave or say hi or something. <laughs> okay, James, James is first out of the block. Is that right? I was just going to say it resonates with me. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> So when we say someone's awake or aware or, uh, you know, Buddha, um, uh, in the deep sense, um, we have to be uh, not in just a Sambhogakaya realm. Sambhogakaya is like uh, uh, bliss bodies or imaginal bodies. And of course, that's how we imagine Manjushri. Uh, the Guru Yoga has to be very present and very now. So we have to think, okay, so uh, I do see people and myself as luminous and aware, but at the same time, uh, they're doing the dishes or not doing the dishes. And at the same time, they're taking out the garbage or not taking out the garbage, or at the same time, uh, they're being nice or not so nice. So uh, our Buddha nature, our fundamental awareness um, doesn't vary according to you know, this or that. That's very difficult. I think it's very difficult to have that kind of evenness uh, so that one day we don't think, oh, I'm really meditating great. Um, I must be a Buddha. I'm ready to like um, ask the Dalai Lama <laughs> if he needs some help <laughs> or <laughs> somebody like that. Or, you know, so, uh, but the variation uh, is very, you know, common. And that's why we do the Guru Yoga, because the Guru Yoga is to stabilize our awareness by using the concrete reality of the now and the people and situations we uh, work with. Whereas sometimes when we're doing Mahamudra or Dzogchen practice, the, the, we're just concentrating on nature mind itself, perhaps. And then we think, um, oh, I, I don't know what that has to do with uh, dogs and cats and freeways and elections and all those kinds of craziness. But uh, the Guru Yoga is meant to uh, not just project the ideal of an idealistic uh, situation, but to bring it very much uh, down to earth. I hope that's making sense. Mm. Let's, let's pause again for a second, okay? <clears throat> mm. Lamas, Karen, I have a a question. <laughs> mm. I mean, I do the mm. a formal practice of guru yoga every day, mm. but it doesn't talk about sangha in there specifically. And so you're kind of surprising me by being a much wider view and me, of course, being narrow. Um, but that's a much wider view uh, than what what the words are and what I read every day, you know, so that's, I've never heard of, or at least I, I can't remember, um, you know, thinking in terms of guru yoga, I'm thinking of the guru and, and not thinking of the sangha and everything else that's in my room or whatever. So, but it does, is that, mm -hmm. is that huge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. So, you know, generally, because we're human beings, uh, you know, we have to start out with, you know, just kind of human form. And then, uh, you know, because we tend to um, be very particular, we, we have to start with a particular uh, person or idealized form, but then uh, it has to become universalized like that. So uh, when we're doing, um, What's called Guru Yoga, uh, we, we need to see uh, the complete uh, luminosity of phenomena uh, and emptiness and luminous quality of the mind and empty and luminous quality of the self, uh, like that. You, you can't, there's no like, it's all, <laughs> reality, reality is over here and Guru Yoga is over here and Samsara is over here. No, they're just all interdependent like that. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Hi. Lamala, 
This is Charlotte. Hi. Hi. Um, in in response to the Guru Yoga question, we try to at some point visualize ourselves as the meditation deity, correct? Yes. And and so it seems that what you're saying is don't limit yourself to that, go beyond that and see everybody in that respect and see everybody's divine nature in that respect. Is that correct? Yes, and yeah, well, yes, and it's going to be seeing everyone's uh, particularly uh, everyone's individual characteristics at the same time. Yes. So Buddha seek uh, what we call conventional reality and absolute reality together at the same time. So that's ultimate, right? You see both at the same time. Right. Thank I you. I think that's kind of difficult, don't you? <laughs> I think that can be very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, maybe we have these experiences every once in a while where we're in love with someone or we're feeling really good about things. We're sitting on the beach and we're watching the sunset and everything seems just perfect, right? Uh, we don't want to be anywhere else. We feel completely open. We feel completely alive and aware. And there's a sense of real uh, love and warmth and bliss, right? So uh, those for most people are momentary and then it's get back in the car and go back to work. But in Dharma, we're uh, working on uh, extending that, uh, those experiences and those insights into realizations until they become the truth for us. <clears throat> but fundamentally, Guru Yoga is going to be working uh, both with absolute nature of awareness and conventional nature of awareness. It's going to be working with uh, traffic and um, you know, 70 million people voted for somebody else and things like that, right? <clears throat> oh, James going for two questions in one morning. That's okay. Thank you. Um, and I will yield the floor after that. I don't want to take up more time than... <laughs> Just teasing, <laughs> that's okay. But I do appreciate this time with you as always and want to get the most out of it <clears throat> possible. Um, in reading... This book yesterday, the three aspects. Okay. There's a comment in here about seeing the good qualities of your spiritual teacher. This is talking about faith. And those whom you take refuge, you feel appreciative and inspired. It makes your mind clear and ready to develop good qualities. Most of the time, one's mind is like muddy water. The faith of appreciation settles the mud of disturbing emotions so that the mind becomes bright and limpid. The feeling is compared to the experience of seeing a person with whom you were in love. I was wondering if you could comment on that. Uh, yeah, that's nice. So, <laughs> uh, the important part in Vajrayana is we add uh, the aspect of bliss or, uh, to see or basically just happiness to wisdom, right? So sometimes people are awfully cognitive and they say, well, I've, I'm seeing nature of mind, nature of phenomena self, and they're kind of describing a, uh, a lab experiment in the lab, right? So uh, uh, in Guru Yoga, the idea is that we uh, help develop those qualities of just appreciation and love and tenderness and happiness so that awareness uh, as a recognition factor of the mind and uh, awareness with the emotional connection and sense of well-being and happiness of the mind are uh, fused like that. So that's a particularly important part of uh, Tantra and Vajjana because um, in my own practice, uh, I've noticed there's a tendency to become um, depressed Buddhists, right? Or... Um, would say, dysthymic Buddhist. <laughs> so we're kind of reality oriented, but it's a little bit of a downer because people are talking about impermanence and 
you got to let go and suffering and um, people aren't developing the happy states of mind uh, and they're focusing merely on change, right? On not harming. And of course that's huge, but uh, the combination of uh, the awareness that has both a cognitive side and uh, an effectual emotional side, um, they, they go together like that totally. So the idea is we, we find people that we, um, we can see that in other people and we have feelings for the other people and that they become like our teachers. So um, you could say we have human teachers, maybe in lineage drama, but you might have um, a dog <laughs> teacher or a horse teacher, a cat teacher or a child teacher like that. And of course, some people are taught um, just through direct through elements, you know, they're interesting. So they're just, um, hanging out the ocean or mountains or sky or the wind, things like that, um, trees and flowers. So, and Vajjana is very interesting um, by developing uh, the correct relationship with phenomena, we can become awake and then developing the correct relationship with sense of identity, we become awake and then developing the correct relationship with nature mind, we can become awake. But, uh, Ultimately, those three all have to be connected or you know, seen as um, basically um, just a Buddha like that, awake. Mm -hmm. Trying to look at people if they're smiling, going, okay, this is making sense. So um, uh, there's, there's many texts on uh, Guru Yoga, but today I wanted to emphasize um, Manjushri practice. Um, so, uh, uh, at other times, I, you know, I've talked about, I'm, I'm willing to, you know, talk about Manjushri practice and Dzogchen, uh, practice from the standpoint of, uh, Mipam Rinpoche, which, uh, I found really delightful to read. So, uh, I'm willing to do that, not today, but, um, <clears throat> uh, the, the important part of Manjushri practice is uh, uh, all the schools of Buddhism uh, in Tibet and and also in Japan and China, um, you know, very uh, connected Manjushri. Um, uh, Yosu Gaur got some uh, training set impairments with a uh, wonderful uh, teacher who had uh, gone to Wutaishan in China and received teachings from Manjushri at that mountain. So uh, mountains are particularly identified with Manjushri in China, and I, I believe also in Japan, I'm not sure. So the Manjushri principle, so to speak, uh, and uh, uh, is uh, essential. I'd like to say, I, I think I haven't um, talked to Manjushri directly about it, um, but maybe maybe Manjushri would identify as uh, non-binary these days. What do you think <laughs> as far as gender? <laughs> do you think so? I think wisdom is non-binary. What do you think like that? <clears throat> Lama Sankapa is said to have um, direct um, speech with, with Manjushri. So... Um, the uh, Jack just said, yes, yes. Um, many times uh, in Buddhism, we think, oh, uh, other religions or shamanistic practices that say they're talking to other beings or Buddhists must be ridiculous because um, uh, there are no other beings, but we like to call ourselves beings. And if we recognize other people, uh, then <laughs> there are other minds out there too. But uh, so in our tradition, yes, we could say, uh, you know, just like uh, Lama Sankapa uh, said, okay, I'm, I'm having direct conversations with Manjushu appearing in person. But actually he um, uh, had a teacher that he went to check them out with, right? So in our tradition, uh, we just don't, uh, visions or visitations or uh, are not um, self-validating. Um, uh, we 
we kind of check it out because we know we can really make a lot of stuff up. So, uh, you know, if you're having uh, direct visions, I'm always interested in hearing about them, but um, you also have to be aware that, well, maybe, maybe that was a powerful dream, but not a direct vision. Um, but in our tradition, we do accept that um, uh, people can journey to other lands like Shambhala, of course, Buddha visited uh, his mother in Tushida, uh, and you know people can travel between different realms. Um, but uh, still, if we're traveling between different realms or we're seeing different beings uh, in this planetary system, uh, and particularly in uh, Sacramento, please drive on the right-hand side of the road, okay? <laughs> so if you believe uh, you don't have to obey ordinary cause and effect um, in that sense, right? Then actually, I really don't want to meet with you in Darshan. <laughs> so uh, I, I want uh, Buddhas that completely unite uh, vast vision and cause and effect at the same time. So Guru Ramshay Padmasambhava is famous for teaching my uh, view is as vast as the sky, and my activity as, is as um, fine as barley flour. Has anybody ever had really fine barley flour? That's really fine. <laughs> so uh, if, if uh, you don't believe in cause and effect, uh, sometimes you're even more dangerous than if you uh, are, are stuck on wrong view of emptiness. So... <clears throat> Please, please believe in uh, uh, cause and effect and stay healthy. <clears throat> and also realize nature of mind and self and phenomena as being uh, a complete unity. So I don't know, Dirk, do you have uh, this text uh, praised to Manjushri? Maybe? The Vajra Yuda one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. so, I think you have an older one if you see a typo in it. Yeah, I think uh some sorry i can present it yeah yeah why don't you present it and then uh we could uh presenting it means you put it up on the screen or we're just saying yeah it. yeah i just put it up on the screen yeah yeah do that that'd be great that'd be really good <clears throat> And then we can read out together and do. It should um, be there now. Do people see it? No? People are shaking their heads so far. Yeah, so. Let's see why. I don't know why. I've got it, Dirk, if you want. Thank well, you. apparently you have the one with the uh, error in it. <laughs> I have it. I just. Uh, I just, this is made my, when I can find a typo, I'm really delighted, you know. So I feel Dirk, like, it was there momentarily, and then it went away again. Okay, so I, that's because I hit it again, so maybe it's just taking a bit here. That's there. it right there. Now it's there? Yeah, good. So when uh, when we're doing praise to Manjushri, it, it's still, um, we have to have some kind of correct view, you know, if we just see... Manjushri is an outer being, and we're just ordinary, then um, it, it feels like religion, or it feels like um, La La Land, or something like that. So uh, when we're uh, doing a praise like this, uh, it's meant to be Vajrayana, in the sense that we at least have uh, the correct conceptual view that uh, all our environment is uh, appearing as uh, uh, you know, all the sounds are mantra, all the appearances are the deity, and all is the nature of profound awareness, right? So we have to start with that view. So we're not just, um, uh, it's not just a, a game. So, but uh, for help, we have a traditional presentation of Manjushri as, as being this uh, uh, delightful person, uh, with a really, really nice butter knife right there. Okay, so uh, would you like to start, Dirk? Can you read it out? Well, we could do it. Could you be the umze for the text? 
Yes, sorry. I I have to switch back and forth, so I'm having a hard time getting my mic on enough. But. Homage to the Guru and the Protector Venerable Manju Gosha. Your wisdom is brilliant and pure like the sun, free from the clouds of the two obscurations. You perceive the whole of reality exactly as it is, and so hold the Book of Transcendental Wisdom at your heart. You look upon all beings, imprisoned with samsara, enshrouded by the thick darkness of ignorance, and tormented by suffering with the love of a mother for her only child. Your enlightened speech, endowed with sixty melodious tones like the thundering roar of a dragon, awakens us from the sleep of destructive emotions and frees us from the chains of karma. Dispelling the darkness of ignorance, you wield the sword of wisdom to cut through all our suffering. Pure from the very beginning, You've reached the end of the ten bhumis and perfected all enlightened qualities. Foremost of the Buddha's heirs, your body is adorned with the 112 marks of enlightenment. To Manju Gosha, the gentle voiced, I prostrate and pray, dispel the darkness from my mind. Omarapatsana di, Omarapatsana di, Omarapatsana di. You want me to do a mala? Yeah, Dio Mala, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, your kindness and love let your wisdom shining light clear the darkness of my ignorance once and for all grant me i pray the intelligence the brilliance to understand the scriptures the words of the buddha and works of the masters and whenever i look upon you or ask of you anything at all lord and protector manjushri let me see you without any hindrance Thank you so much. Perfect. So um, Dirk has led uh, recitations of a uh, uh, fundamental text called uh, Chanting the Names of Manjushri. That's one uh, translation in English. When, when are you doing that again, Dirk? Uh, we don't have one scheduled, but we can do one any time. So... Uh, I'll say a few words about that, you know. So um, this is a, a fundamental text that uh, is one of the first uh, texts that um, young monks and nuns learn. Uh, it's interesting. They, they learn how to chant it before they learn what it means. You know, that's kind of Tibetan style. Um, but uh, it's enormously important text that... Uh, is tantric in nature, but is seen as uh, a fundamental, um, you know, first thing, so to speak, first text uh, in the conjurer. So uh, if you're willing to lead that again uh, for people, that would be wonderful. Um, I can't remember what translation you're using. So which which one do you like to use? Well, I, I like the one by uh, Tuko uh, Sherdor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's right. much smoother. I think it's easier for people to understand what's going on, too, than uh, like the Davidson's pretty uh, full of jargonistic stuff. And he, he, he does a lot of round the circle stuff. And then uh, the one the one by Guillermo Dorje is a little bit esoteric in a way, too. So and then the Wayman one is 
there are four of them basically. The Wayman one is very uh, like a like a like like a classic crib. So I like the Tokyo Shirt drawer one. <laughs> yes, so uh, uh, that's a good one, people to use because it has the commentary by Vimala Mitra with kind of notes by Garab Dorje and. Um, it doesn't have a lot of jargon like that. It's very readable. So uh, I, I can't remember the, what the title of the book is. Uh, so in praise of Manjushi, what is, what is the name of it? <laughs> I can't remember. Um, Derek's going to look. But um, uh, uh, what, what's the title? What's the title, Derek? Is this like? So uh, we'll find out from Dirk in a second. So uh, it's the wisdom of Manjushri. Oh, that's right, the wisdom of Manjushri. Yeah, yeah, like, like, <laughs> yeah like that. <laughs> um, I had the good fortune to uh, meet Alex Wayman in New York in the um, '70s. Uh, because this is one uh, late 70s, early 80s, uh, because this is, um, along with Lama Sankhapa's Guru Yoga, um, was one of the first books that uh, my teacher, Geshe Gatso, suggested. And it was, com it was completely incomprehensible. Uh, so um, in Colorado, I thought, well, I, you know, I had time then. So actually went to a conference where Alex Wayman was and talked with him. And I was thinking, oh, talking to him, it'll make more sense. It did not make more sense. Alex Wayman's, uh, I'm sure he's passed away now, really, really nice, but total geek. So a scholar. So uh, then uh, many years ago, uh, when my family was, when we were living in Nevada City, I invited Ron Davison up also, uh, and he's a wonderful scholar too, and a practitioner, but that was an impossible read also. So uh, Ron's very nice, but uh, uh, it helps us to be able to read the text and feel long. So uh, I'm glad we're using that text. That's wonderful. Um, so uh, for those of you in the Buddhist studies program, uh, when Kenshin Rimshi was here. He said, oh, you're doing tenants, you're tenants, that's good. Uh, from a scholarship point of view, uh, that's kind of like, um, you know, shows you're, uh, you're a player, you're in the professional realm. Um, when, uh, uh, when I started first studying with uh, Gishla and uh, he had me read these two texts, that, that would be like, uh, you know, if, if I had said, oh, I'm studying with Geshe Gyatso from Sarah J, and they would, they would say, well, how do you like, you know, what, what's it like as American chanting the names of Manjushri or Namasangiti? And I said, if I didn't know what that is, I wouldn't be a player. So it's like, you know, like, like that. So with these basic um, uh, texts, uh, uh, which are common to all the traditions, is our uh, I'm promoting that, so to speak, and uh, I'm delighted that uh, Dirk is willing, uh, who's three hours difference, right? Willing to do that, uh, willing to help us out. <clears throat> when, when we go outside today, maybe um, we'll be in ordinary reality, which is fine. Just also be in uh, uh, absolute reality and blend those two, and that's Manjushri practice. It's cold, uh, you'll feel the cold, then you'll put on your jacket, right? So uh, if you recognize the union of those two uh, and the fact that uh, uh, it's happening spontaneously to feel it and to recognize it, then you're realizing and to see the complete openness of mind, then you experience nature mind and if you're putting on your jacket correctly um, and walking correctly, then you're realizing, um, you know, practical reality. So, you know, when your dog barks, then you can feed your dog, you know, 
So Manjushri is not, um, you know, always this mythological side. It's the actual functioning of our uh, daily life and our mind. So, uh, you know, that's why sometimes it's it's fun. You know, Zen's very kind of Chinese practical. You know, so it says, you know, when you're hungry, eat. Uh, when you're tired, sleep, right? Chop water, carry wood. But um, that has to be done with recognizing uh, mind, self, and phenomena correctly, right? Uh, otherwise, it's just, I got to go out and chop the wood, or it's cold, I got to put on my jacket. And uh, the self and phenomena and mind do not arise in harmony. They arise slightly uh, disjointed like that. They, um, they arise, but they arise samsarically uh, kind of out of harmony. So when you see the three come together, uh, you have the recognition aspect, the mind is cold or rainy, and you put on your jacket, or, or if it's hot and you take it off, then uh, phenomena, uh, mind and self, uh, are balanced in uh, correct unity like that. That's really important. Otherwise, they're a little bit off, right? We get stuck on uh, either uh, our identity or we get stuck on the um, sensation or we get stuck on the, uh, you know, putting on our jacket backwards. Hmm. So uh, I'd like to have, if there's anybody that says this uh, talk has been completely incomprehensible and I can help in any way, that would be great. <laughs> or um, someone has a question or complaint, that would be good. <clears throat> well, I would like to offer a reading of uh, Manjushri a week from tomorrow at 8 o'clock uh, your time, if that's okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So anybody who wants to do it, I'll uh, put it on the calendar. Oh, that's good. Duke, is that 8 a.m. or p.m.? Oh, I'm sorry, that's 8 p.m. It'll be after this Monday's uh, talk by Lama. Yeah, that would be perfect. So, so we'll just use the same code, even. So it'll just continue. okay. Yeah, just stay on. Yeah, that would yeah. be good. That's okay. very good. And that's a good idea. Like that, perfect. Lama, can I ask a question? I think I I've, I've been writing down what you're talking about, and then mm. now that I'm looking at it, when you say you're talking, you're saying phenomena, self, and nature, and mind. When you are talking about self and that the way you're seeing that is complete unity are you seeing your your emptiness of yourself and also your ordinary self is that what you mean yeah with with each of those uh we could say there's a recognition but there's also a recognition that uh there they don't have uh you can't separate it out or find it by itself, right? Okay. So uh, I, e even the Buddhas or Guru Rinpoche or Lama Sankapa can't put their mind on the table, right? <laughs> We're using it all the time. And uh, the ground consciousness, the fundamental awareness uh, is a source of samsara nirvana, but uh, we, you're not going to be able to find it as a thing. But yet we can say, you know, there's recognition and we can say there's non-recognition. So, and then we can say that there's me and then we can say there's not me. And then we can say uh, phenomena could be in the inner and outer phenomena. We could say that's a thought or that's a tree or that's a dog or that's a fish or something. But many teachers, um, I think sometimes assume, you know, students just know this, you know, like, uh, but uh, these three aspects, uh, of course, we're just designating them, um, imputing them, but uh, you can find out by, you know, listening to different teachings, some will be more on phenomena, some will be more on nature of identity or self, and some will be more on the nature of mind. But if a teacher is teaching Dzogchen or Mahamudra, to uh, properly and to students, they're assuming you've already worked through uh, phenomena, like you've already had some acquaintance with uh, Abhidharma, you know, all the way from skandhas, you know. So I know Dirk gave a talk on skandhas at one point, you know, uh, you know how that, 
and then of course there'd be a talk on uh, analytical, analytical talk perhaps or emotional talk about the nature of self, you know, how we, how we think we exist. So if we're talking on nature of mind, if we're talking, you know, real uh, deep uh, Mahamudras of Chen, uh, then unless we have some uh, background and those uh, two pieces of the pyramid, we won't be able to make it to the top, right? And it'll be, then you won't really have pyramid, you'll just have a pole. And then uh, my teacher said, you don't have, this is how he'd criticize, I'm just telling him, <laughs> he says, you, you are like a bamboo in the wind. You want to get to the top, but it goes like this. <laughs> it says, you should be like a pyramid. So you have understand identity and nature of self. You understand nature of phenomena. And they're very broad. And the broad piece is, you know, the uh, precepts and the activity, the conduct, right? And then when you get to the tip, uh, it's very high, but also very stable. So we, we want to have a stable uh, uh, presence, a stable sense of nowness, uh, stable awareness like that. Um, otherwise, uh, you're just like the top of a um, bamboo pole or top of a, um, you know, a tree swaying in the wind. Do you know, do you know some Dzogchenpa and Mahamudra students or Tantrikas like that? I do, you know? Uh, so uh, that's why uh, it looks like when we're studying deeply the Lamrim, when we're looking at Abhidharma, when we're doing, um, you know, uh, low rig, when we're doing Dharma Kirti, Dignaga kinds of things, it looks like we're going slowly. And it looks like other people who are maybe going faster, but then we have a very firm foundation and your uh, stability of uh, your realization will turn into the truth like that. You want to be the truth. You don't want to just say, I know the truth. You want to be the truth. So uh, maybe just a few more comments and then um, we we can end with some, uh, maybe I'll lead people in long mixima for Lama Sankapa like that. <clears throat> but I'm sure Lama Sankapa uh, as a person was known to be very, very humble. Uh, I have a feeling, you know, if I was talking to him, well, I, I'm really happy people are doing my guru yoga, but um, if they're doing my guru yoga without doing the trainings on the nature of phenomena, nature of self, and fundamentally on the nature of mind itself, then you're just praising me and I don't need your praise. <laughs> Again, my DJ Geshe I used to say, oh, you're, you're, I'm so glad I met you. You're wonderful. You know, so, and he'd go, you know what? Don't say that until you've done any practice. <laughs> he says, you don't know if I'm wonderful or not. You're just saying that. You know, you, you really think your teacher's gonna go, thank you so much, that's so nice, you think I'm wonderful, or but well, thank you, you know. But he was very, a little bit sword cutting, you know, just saying, you don't know whether I'm really good or lined or not. You haven't done any practice. You're not doing the practice you said you'd be doing. So when you have done the practice and you've had some experience and realizations, that then you can give me some praise. Right? It's like that. <laughs> so I think Lama Sankaba would say, well, thanks a lot, but actually I'd rather you actually just spend some time on your cushion, you know? <laughs> okay, so who, who would like to say something before we uh, do some mix and on close today? Mm -hmm. We're close to long life prayer, and then we'll do Mixima at the very end. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's never said anything, would you like to say hi? Okay, that's good. Everybody wants to go outside and see what it's like outside. We're all tired, a little tired of being cooked up. So, so let's let's go to. Uh, we'll end with. Uh, of course, long life prayers and uh, mix them in English, and then I'll I'll do the song. So, can we put the uh, closing prayers up? Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings, without exception, into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel Bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen 
not diminished, but increased more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chen Rezik, Tenzin Gatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish. May the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Low song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras, Sankapa, crown jewel of the Snowyland sages, Losang Dragpa, and make request at your holy feet. Ang Chen Ke Fe Su Yang Song Ba Ba La Song Drag Pe Shab La Su Wa Te So here we're adding um, and Vajrapani, Lord of the Secret, destroy the hordes of Mars without exception. So um, in the chanting the names of Manjushri, uh, you know, Vajrapani um, is the one showing up and saying, hey, to Shakyamuni, uh, what about Manjushri? So um, Vajrapani is sometimes called the um, uh, holder of the tantras, uh, which are secret, of course, and destroyer holds of Maras. So Maras are um, the uh, uh, obstructors, right? Uh, most of the Maras we have are uh, not uh, demons that we could see or that have caused us problems. The, one, the Maras are the ones we have a harder time identifying with. The Maras of, I don't think I can do it, or maybe it's not worth doing it, or just giving up. Uh, those kind of Maras are, are uh, the worst, right? So um, uh, the... The mantra here we put up uh, for um, Lama Sankapa is Oma Guru Vajradas Matakirti City Home. So um, I'll do seven of those mantras for you. Uh, and uh, then you can, uh, if people are introduced, interesting in doing Lama Sankapa's mantra, they can do that. So Oma Guru Vajradas Matakirti City Home. Oma Guru Vajradas. Oma Guru Vajradas. Oma Guru Oh, Ma Guru Vajradas Matakirti City Home. So, uh, from the standpoint of Guru Yoga, uh, you know, for a long time I was going, well, what would it be like to actually meet Lama Sankapa in person? What was he like? And then eventually I said, I don't need to meet Lama Sankapa in person. I've met my teacher in person. And then I really think things for me began to take off because I wasn't looking outside of my uh, present situation or a present experience. So uh, whatever your present experience uh, is today, you get to have a meal now or go out and walk the dog or you know, make an omelet, then uh, I hope you uh, enjoy uh, phenomena and enjoy yourself and realize nature of awareness. All right, Omaha, thank you everybody. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Look, thank you, Dirk. Okay, thanks, Karen. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Lama. Thank you, Lama. Thank you, Lama. And yeah. those who are going to join me for you know what. Thank you, Lama. <laughs> All right. You're over there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lama. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lama. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Lama. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, I kind of, I'm getting more used to doing this now. So, but eventually we'll be back in person so that's good yeah hi sasha she can't hear me hi bye thanks roberta
Why is that? Okay, I'll sign off now. <laughs>